Top 5 Tips for Avoiding Academic Misconduct Academic misconduct is defined by Swansea University as committing any act which can help you or another person to gain an unfair and unpermitted advantage. This could mean, for example, buying a paper instead of writing it yourself. It can be using other texts in your writing, but not stating where they came from. It can be sharing answers or working together with other people when it's not permitted, or not following exam regulations. Committing academic misconduct can result in serious consequences, such as a mark of zero on the assignment or for the module. It could result in the cancellation of all marks for your level of study or even disqualification from your program. Therefore, it's important to learn how to avoid it. Our top five tips to avoid academic misconduct are give yourself enough time to do the assignment, communicate with your lecturers if you need an extension or if you have extenuating circumstances, always acknowledge where you found your information, keep track of your sources when note-taking, and finally, when in doubt, ask for help. Let's take a closer look at each of these tips. Tip number one, give yourself enough time to do the assignment. Many students who face academic misconduct cases say that they didn't have enough time to complete the work properly. Therefore, it's important to get started early and make a plan which considers all the steps you'll need to take to complete your assignment. Think realistically about how much time you might spend reading and researching your topic, writing, editing and proofreading, and then make a schedule for yourself which works towards the deadline. Of course, things don't always go according to schedules, so this leads us to our second tip. Communicate with your lecturers if you need an extension or have extenuating circumstances. If you recognize that you cannot complete an assignment on time, there's no harm in asking for an extension. Likewise, if there are personal issues affecting your work, you may be able to apply for extenuating circumstances. Now, if it's the case that you can't be granted an extension, or if your situation is not recognized as an extenuating circumstance, just remember that a low mark or even getting a zero on an assignment is better than facing a case of academic misconduct, which could result in much worse than a zero on an assignment. Tip number three, remember to acknowledge where you found your information. This means that when you use a text or an idea from another source in your own writing, you need to cite and reference it correctly. Citations occur within your text or as a footnote and references are placed at the end of your text. Depending on the referencing system you're using, you'll need to include information such as the author's name, the date of publication and other details about the text. Situations where you'll need to cite and reference are when you use someone else's words directly. You'll usually place these words inside quotation marks and provide a citation and a reference. Also, if you paraphrase, meaning you use someone else's idea, but you put it in your own words, then you'll also need to cite and reference. If you're not sure how to cite and reference correctly, first, find out which referencing style you need to use and then follow the guidelines on how to do this. Our library has guides and tutorials for the different referencing systems used at the university, and these can help you acknowledge direct quotes, summaries, and paraphrased texts. They can also help with more difficult referencing issues such as distinguishing between a primary source and a secondary source, making sure that you reference what you read, or how to acknowledge information from a website or a government document. So this all brings us to tip number four, Keep track of the source when note-taking. What's meant by this is that the moment you write down any material from another source, be sure to also note where that source came from and keep those two pieces of information together during your writing process. If you've written a direct quote, then place quotation marks around the material right away so you don't forget that it's not in your own words. Some students might think that citations and references are something that they'll add in at the end when they're finished their writing. The problem with this is that they could forget where the information came from in the first place, resulting in possibly hours of searching for that information. Or they could end up attributing that text with the wrong source or even forget that they needed to cite the text in the first place. And this can result in a case of plagiarism. Therefore, 
keep the material and the sources together, even if you're at the note-taking stage, the outlining stage, or just sketching out your first draft. Doing this will save you a lot of time and stress and help you avoid plagiarizing others' work. Of course, you'll need to take the time to make sure that the citations and the references are in the correct format. And yes, this can be done at the end of your writing process. So it's a good idea to make sure you leave enough time to do this and work it into your writing plan. Our final tip, when in doubt, ask for help. There are many resources available to you to help you avoid academic misconduct. Your course handbooks and guides should outline what you can and cannot do for different assignments. However, if something's not clear to you and you need extra advice, you can always ask your lecturer or tutor. Furthermore, there are web pages on the university website which detail the academic misconduct policy and procedures. And there are a variety of free courses offered by the library and the Center for Academic Success designed to help you find materials, cite and reference correctly, write at different levels, and much more. You can even book one-to-one -one appointments with the librarians in your subject area and with the tutors at the Center for Academic Success for specific questions and more personalized help. So once again, our top five tips are give yourself enough time to do the assessment, communicate with your lecturers, remember to acknowledge where you found your information, keep track of your sources when note-taking, and when in doubt, ask for help. Hopefully these tips will help you approach your studies at Swansea University with academic integrity. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you can find these links in the video description.